shittest wrestler in the world. Uh, yeah, using the crispy boy mask uh, to pass it off as uh, a predetermined uh, wrestling sort of nod, or whatever. Um, in fact, let me take this off, it's really warm. I'm not going to be playing any music uh, while we're doing the... Uh... <sighs> Hang on a minute. There we go. The camera's like... I'm looking... I'm like sat face the camera, but it's like tilted. Anyway, uh, yeah. Welcome to uh, another brewery showcase. Uh, quarantine edition. Uh, yeah, in the, the mist of... Uh, or the midst, I should say of uh, a bit of a pandemic everything's a bit up in the air um i am self-isolating for the good of my family and friends um is it a really good idea to be uh doing a live stream when you're not supposed to be in work i'm self-isolating i'm not ill they know i'm not ill um but what the hell am i gonna do do you know what i mean anyway so uh yeah today we're having a look at oh let me get me banner no i don't have any banners for this one i've got to add one uh, but today oh sorry today we're having a look at three beers from top rope brewing out of wales and all three of these beers as well as many more uh were kindly given to me by adam aka mersey beers uh who Link is in the description to both his Untapped and, of course, his YouTube. Um, hopefully, he does videos in the future. Um, but he's always welcome to join any sorts of streams that we uh, we will have, or I, I will have. Um, and, yeah, so I thought, I'm a bit bored. That light's really bright. Makes me look just even more distorted. This camera quality is absolutely awful. I need to invest in a proper camera for live streaming. But um, yeah, so I thought I'm, I'm bored. I'm in self-isolation. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, hope no one you know has been um, you know, negatively affected by the uh, coronavirus or your vulnerable you know, friends and family and yourselves really at the end of the day. Um, and the, the, the beer industry is going through a bit of a crisis as well uh, but it's it's good to see people are coming together there's like some raffles going on on various Facebooks um, breweries are now doing local deliveries uh, bottle shops are also doing uh, discounted deliveries as well as discounted beer um, bars, uh, you, know, you can go in and take any sort of vessel you have and have it filled up with uh, whatever's on tap and um yeah all things considered um it's a really negative time right now for that not just the beer industry but the um i always forget the name for it like restaurants and bars and uh, not lifestyle industry you know what i'm talking about um even like brewdog are you know doing fundraisers there's um kickstarters indiegogos that sort of thing going on so it's good to see that we are coming together and um yeah, so I think it's a bit perfect to, to showcase a brewery in, the, in a time like this. So if you're interested by any of the beers um, that I've done today, then all of our Top Ropes links will be down below. Because even if you can't buy locally, even if you're not really in a position where you can buy beer, as long as you're sharing around breweries and all the deals and stuff going on, you are helping to, uh, you know, create some form of safety net. And you know what? The, at the end of the day... Um, the only real certainty is that, unfortunately, um, I hope the microphone's okay, by the way. And not too close. We'll leave you there for now. Um, yeah, hospitality. There we go. Um, the sad thing is that uh, a lot of companies will, unfortunately, go bust due to the nature of this. And, uh, yeah, so it's good to see people come together. And even if you just, you know, share in a brewery's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter page, untapped, whatever, then you are, you know, helping uh, that brewery hopefully make a few sales. And uh, if, you know, the breweries survive after this uh, period, hopefully there's a little bit of uh, assistance from the government and things like that. And 
hopefully it develops where it might not be as bad as we initially thought, although I highly doubt it. I think you do have to take it seriously. Um, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how this whole, like, uh, home delivery and things like that, because even breweries who don't have a web shop are now in a position where they have to, uh, not only locally, you know, give them di- give beers directly to customers, but also, you know, having a beer sent out. So, yeah. I think we're a resilient bunch of people, and even if some breweries go under, other breweries will come together and, uh, you know, make the, the best out of a, a, a really bad situation, really. Um, so, yeah, that that's it. Uh, that's my sort of um, inspirational speech there. But, uh, yeah, so, same as usual, I'll be uh, reviewing these all live uh, during this chat. Hopefully, I'm going to condense it a little bit more uh, than the previous ones. And then, in the future, you will see the actual reviews um, uploaded onto the channel as well. So, I'll quickly have a look at the comments. I've got a couple of comments from uh, Terry, aka Terry's Got Reviews. Hope you and yours are, are doing okay, my friend. He says, a bloody bank robber, LOL. And he says... Drink beer, kill the virus, job done. Well, I've been doing good uh, while I've been self-isolating and uh, getting through my stash. Made a couple, well, made an order so far because Flavely are doing uh, one of the, you know, where you get like 20 beers for 19 quid with a magazine, two glasses and the snack. Uh, that's just more stuff. I know I'm not really supporting any small breweries that way because um, it's, yeah, the likes of Four Pure and that sort of thing involved in these sort of projects. But, you know, at least I've got beer to just... You know, have put away that I don't really need to focus too much on. And then I will be making some uh, purchases over the next few days in time for next week, just so I've got, you know, I can help support uh, some companies, you know, financially um, as well as best I possibly can. I know it won't really make that much of a difference, but, you know, at a time like this, as long as I can, my contribution at least pay someone. Uh, for a couple of hours, then, you know, it's it's all good at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, and also, massive thank you once again to Adam uh, for setting this up. So, first beers first. Oh, first beer first, I should say. I'm just trying to set up somewhere where I can actually have my phone so I can record, because... I don't know how well that's picked on my iPad, but the fan on my MacBook is going absolutely insane right now. So, the three beers that we'll be looking at. The first one, starting off with DOA, which is a lager. Clocking in at four, whatever I've put there in the banner, 0.5% ABV. So, looking forward to that. Not had a lager for a little while, actually. Uh, then the next beer that we're going to do will be the Overkill IPA, clocking in at 5.5%. Not too sure what sort of style that IPA is, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. And then the last one, and I thought I'd save this one to last so it doesn't really overpower on the flavour. We're having a look at a mango pale ale called Papa Mango. And I'm sure all of these have references to wrestling in some way. I was going to get me a old wrestling toys out of the loft, but I forgot. So... I'll have unimaginative thumbnails for each beer review, as per usual. But, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to having a few beers. Um, I might get interrupted because a friend from work is finishing and um, they'll want to talk for a little bit because I've missed the people from work, uh, even though it's a little bit up in the air whether I'll have a job to go back to. But uh, do you know what? At least I'm still above ground, breathing, got family around me so if worse comes to worse it just means I have to find another job do you know what I mean um, a lot of people have it a lot worse than I do let's be honest so should we get on with it so I'm gonna get me sorry I keep on with this microphone um, let's see if I can actually stand this here so you can at least see me when I shoot a video Wow, that's really fucking close. That's too close. So, uh, yeah, I'm sitting on a chair. I'm not sitting on the floor this time like a, a little bitch. And, uh, wow, I've got a very much 70s hairstyle going on at the moment. I have been keeping clean and stuff in self-isolation. I've not become 
that much of a bump. Uh, not more than I usually would do, to be honest. So, uh, do you know what? I don't care if that's too close. I'll let the beer do the talking. So, yeah, without any further ado, um, let's get this beer sorted. And as always, comments always welcome. And I will respond to comments after I've done the first review. Anyway, look at that greasy fringe. Lovely stuff. Do you know what? I'm gonna sit. It's gonna look very awkward on camera, but I don't fucking care. So let's get this sorted. Who am I talking to? We'll use this glass for this. Hi guys, welcome to another beer review. You're awkwardly and intimately close. Well, that's the way I want it to be. Not really. There's just no way I can put the camera that's any decent because I don't have a tripod because I'm too cheap. So uh, today we're going over to Top Rope uh, Brewing out of Wales and uh, this is uh, the first of three uh, reviews that you'll be seeing this week because I'm currently in the process of doing my um, brewery showcase and uh, at the time of the recording I'm not going to mention this in every review because I've been doing it for every review I've recorded since I've been in self-isolation. We're going through some testing times now, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, but to, to help me get through that, my good friend Adam, aka Mersey Beers, kind of gave me some beers. And uh, I've been reviewing them. You might have already seen a couple of reviews, I'm not too sure. Can't remember what, how I've uploaded them and in what order. And my CD shelf's very dusty. That'll be something to do, won't it? But uh, yeah, so he get, gave me quite a few beers. So a massive thank you, Adam. His, link, his links... I can't fucking speak. His links will be down there. It's like I'm talking to the audience off camera, aren't I? It's like fourth wall breaking. Um, yeah, anyway, um, Adam very kindly gifted me some beers, and I left him some as well. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed your beers, Adam. But everyone else, go check him out on YouTube. Go check him out on Untapped and follow him. Um, very active on Untapped. YouTube, you'll find him here and there on live chats and in comments and taking the piss out of me because I've done scale and style, but... We'll forgive him for that because it's often just in what he says. So uh, today we're having a look at the DOA Lager, which is clocking in at 4.5% uh, ABV. And I think this was either brewed for or in collaboration with um, TNT Extreme Wrestling. Um, and yeah, I think they, well, you can go and tell by the name of the brewery, can't you? Top rate. Uh, wrestling inspired, fantastic sort of like hardcore uh, artwork there. What they call it, no rules. What's that sort of wrestling? I can't remember. Where, like the exciting ones where they go out the stadium and go backstage and like hit each other with like traffic cones and for some reason someone's left a a two by four covered in barbed wire in a toilet. That sort of thing. Um, yeah, lovely artwork on this. Again, not sure what the sort of occasion is with this beer, but uh, I'm in the mood for a lager because I've not had one for a wee while. So let's see what we get with this one. And the pour is exactly what you would expect and want with the style. So we won't pour it all in. Oh, God, way too close. Won't pour it all in because um, I want to get my nose in there. And the uh, first thing you'll see is very luminous. luminous. Uh, it's a little bit more faded uh, looking at it without light you know, shining off it. Uh, hazy, it's unfiltered. Um, it's got a very sort of like goldeny amber hue to it. Almost looks like um, a session pale ale by all accounts. But still has those lager sort of um, characters in terms of its appearance. Be poured with one thing is worth like a sudsy white head, looking very nice. Let's give it a sniff. I'm getting a defined citrusy character coming through, so maybe there's some citra or you know citrusy hops thrown in there. But you definitely get that muskiness. It sort of reminds me of um, that combination of the muskiness of the malts and that citrusy aroma. It sort of reminds me of like a freshly you made schnitzel and you've squeezed some lemon on top. A little bit grassy, herbal. 
that citrusy tone is really nice in this. I'm usually quite against adding unnecessary hops to lagers, but on the nose, it's really, really nice. It's like a citrusy pilsner almost. Anyway, it smells really good. So let's give it a taste. Cheers, Adam. Cheers, everyone. Hmm. I'm going to get interrupted. What?
<laughs> well, that was uh, that was interesting. That was actually a uh, work that just found. Looks like there's still a chance of me still having a job because uh, they're talking about doing uh, working from home. So, oh, I tell you what, guys, that's a big fucking weight off my mind. Apologies about that uh, disruption there, but at least you got to see a special guest. Uh, look, I can pause video. I uh, fuck knows what I'm up to on the review itself, but yeah, fucking relief, genuine relief there. So, uh, yeah, thank you for bearing with me. And uh, uh, Craig from Cambria View says, didn't get a notification that you was live. Yeah, I don't think you get a notification unless you schedule an event. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you, you could join us, Craig. So, um, yeah, without any further ado, let's carry on with the, the beer review. Sorry about that uh, disruption, ladies and gentlemen. That was actually work on the phone. Um, so, I was worried that after I'd finished self-isolating, um, I might not have a job to go to, but the thinking of doing stuff, uh, seeing if I'm eligible to work from home with like the setup that I have, I've got a headset and that sort of thing, so yeah. So I don't know what part of the review I was up to, I don't know what exactly you heard then uh, from my good old mother Let me know someone's on the phone. But um, yeah, uh, this is a really nice citrusy, bready musky lager. It's got a nice body to it, with it being unfiltered, it's got that sort of Keller, Landbeard, Sickle sort of thing going on, it's a bit smooth. And I think they have used some sort of citrus hop, or citrusy hop in this. This is definitely a defined citrus bite, or it reminds me of a really citrusy German Pilsner as well. Oh yeah, this is this is gorgeous. And then Craig says that's fantastic news, mate. I'm reading comments live when we should be doing a beer review. I'm a little bit flustered at the moment. Oh, that's good. That's really nice. Do you know what? With what's going on for brewers, I think a good way. Obviously, it depends on if the brewer can afford to like keep a brewery open um, whilst they're on potential lockdown. If you brewed some lagers now and let them lager, I think that that'd be a really good way to uh, help maintain um, this sort of stuff, the industry a little bit. And uh, you know what? To me, 2020 was going to be the year of the lager. I keep looking at over there. Well, you can't really tell because one eye's looking there, one eye's looking there anyway. But uh, yeah, I think 2020 is going to be, or could have been, the year of the lager because I've had some fantastic examples from all over the world. And this is one of them. Yeah, I really can't fault that too much. It's just exactly what I'm, I need from a lager with a little bit of an enhanced, refreshing, citrusy bite. So... Off to a good start with uh, this. Stop looking at the laptop here. Off to a good start with this. And um, the only thing that's like stopping it from getting a perfect 10 out of 10 is there's a little bit of a lingering aftertaste, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But that's just a minor nitpick. So I can still comfortably give Top Ropes DOA Lager a 9 out of 10. Highly, highly recommended if you can get a hold of it. And, um, yeah, really good example of a, an unfiltered lager. Very happy with that, indeed. So, uh, yeah, if you've tried this, then let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. If you've tried anything else from Top Rope, then highly recommended. And uh, if not, go check them out uh, in the de description box. Blah, blah, blah. There'll be some links. And, uh, yeah, lovely, lovely stuff, indeed. So, 9 out of 10 for Top Rope's DOA Lager. Massive thank you once again to Adam for this, and uh, we're off to... I've not had a bad beer from the beers that I've drank that Adam gave me. They've all been fantastic, and this is no exception. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you're all taking care, 
and uh, yeah, see you all later for another review. Cheers, guys. God, I fucked that review up. Jesus Christ. God, I don't know. I'm nervous all of a sudden. Um, and I need to actually get all ready for um, 10. Because I need to pay someone for cigarettes. Because I can't obviously go out and get them myself. Do you know what I mean? But um, and I'm, I am a bit low. But yeah, this is really good stuff. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But yeah, cheers to that, Craig. It's not really been like a a hindrance for me, or like I've been dwelling on it too much. But with people who I know, um, who not just in my workplace, and yes, this is how I have to take um, photos for um, screenshots because the other camera is fucked. On my phone, so I have to use the sort of selfie camera. And I want to do this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I think that'll do. So, uh, yeah. Lovely stuff indeed. Well, yeah, it's like, I know I don't exactly have the biggest reach and stuff like that, but I hope with me uh, promoting the upcoming reviews and doing this, it might just give one or two more people um, a reason to give Top Rope um, a check. And that's why I do these brewery showcases. Uh, sometimes it'll be a brewery that I'm a big fan of. And uh, sometimes... There'll be um, a brewery that I've never tried before and not tried for a while. Um, so, yeah, that's that sort of thing. Uh, it says, you know you are live, right? Uh, yes, I do indeed. Uh, live television, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've not divulged too much information, I don't think. Um, and you know what? What I do in my free time while I'm self-isolating um, is my business and whatever gets me through the day, I suppose. What's that? Yeah, there we go. Tell you what, I look like a right scruffy bastard tonight. So, that was the DOA. Let's move on to the Overkill IPA, which is here 5.5% ABV. Not too sure uh, what sort of style of IPA it is, um, but. I'm looking forward to it nonetheless. Part of me is hoping for like a bit of a West Coast sort of style. There we go. The shower just then, yeah, it looks like it's not been cleaned like since the start of the week. So, uh, yeah, let's get the ball rolling on this one. Cheers to everyone watching and all the comments. So, let's get this started. Hi guys, welcome to another intimate beer review. Um, I'm not doing this by choice, I'm doing this because I've got nowhere to put my camera. Uh, in the middle of doing um, a brewery showcase for Top Rope Brewing, and uh, the second beer that I'm reviewing is the Overkill IPA. These guys, of course, coming out of Wales, and uh, the beers were kindly gifted to me by the, uh, the wonderful Adam from Mersey Beers, so his links will be down below, as well as Top Ropes, uh, because in times like this, even though hopefully the worst will have passed by the time you're seeing this video, um, it's going to be a struggle for breweries, um, for the, pretty much all breweries, uh, but especially for small breweries of the likes of Top Rope. So, um, yeah, go give them a like, go share the stuff, even if you can't get access to their beers, show them some love. Share them on your Instagram stories because you never know someone, one of, you, one of your followers from Wales or the northwest of England who can get uh, regular access to their beers will be like, oh, I've got a minute. I'm going to give them a try. Let's see if I can find them. That's what it's all about. So, yeah, Overkill IPA. Not sure what style of IPA this is, but it is clocking in at 5.5% ABV. Bunch of white milk can. Beautiful artwork. Uh, I'm sure this is in relation to a specific 
a wrestler, but I'm not too sure which. Because uh, after the Attitude Era, I've just got no sort of uh, recollection or interest in wrestling, to be honest. But, uh, oh well. I know that they do a Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, themed beer. I can't remember what it was called, though. I know Craig from Dead Reviews has reviewed that one. And let's see what we get with this beer, then. So... It's more on the sort of a New England scale, although it's quite dark, nice and... It's all, it looks dank, if that makes sense. The yeah, unfiltered, nothing getting through there. It's sort of like a murky sort of um, apricot puree, or peach puree. Um, but looks, obviously, with the lighting, a little bit more luminous and vibrant there. And then there's one thing that's worth of a nice creamy-looking head on top. So, uh, yeah, looking really nice so far. Let's see what we get on the nose. Soft, sherbetty, sweet citrus. A little bit of grapefruit going on. There's like a sort of um, slight pineapple character, or at least the, the juice that you get in tinned pineapples. This has like a, like a sort of... Um, Icing, like icing that's been had some sort of um, like orange put into it. Yeah, it's got like a sweet sort of like icing, like creaminess. Mmm, smells really nice actually. Nice, soft, gentle. Nothing really in your face or anything like that. So yeah, off to a, a good start with this. So let's see what it tastes like. Cheers, everyone. And cheers, Adam. And cheers to everyone watching this live. Yes, because I'm live. I'm one of those people who addresses the live people while he's recording a video. Cheers. First of all, what I'm going to say is body is just a little, little bit thin. Even for a 5.5% um, IPA. It's not watery or anything like that. Far from it, to be honest. But yeah, it's got that slight zingy sherbetiness. I'm getting more of a slight pear character. More stone fruits are coming through. There's maybe a very slight citrusy bite there as well. It has a slight herbal dankness to it, but not too much. It's not really resiny or oily. Yeah, it's a smooth, rounded, sort of easy-going IPA, really. Uh, there's no real distinct flavours coming through. You've probably tasted this beer a lot of times, but it, it has been done well. I'm not going to shit on it or anything like that. If it just had a bit more of a satisfying mouthfeel, it would just give it just that little bit more going for it. But yeah, you know, I'm not going to complain too much. Get a little bit of gassy now because it's not been long since I reviewed the first one. It's like savoury element coming through as well, like a muskiness on the back end. Nice bitterness, finishes a little bit dry. Um, yeah, it's just a simple, sort of safe, nondescript IPA. Nothing really amazing about it, but at the same time, there's nothing really wrong with it. And uh, you'd be a fool to turn down, you know. Um, a few cans of this. I'd happily have this in the fridge just to chill down, sit back and just drink. And I think, you know, sometimes breweries want to make those sorts of beers. You know, they don't want to get too outlandish. They don't want it to be like, this is a game changer. <clears throat> or like, this is the best beer we've ever brewed. It's it's not always about that. It's just always about, sometimes you just want to have a consistently good product. And I could imagine this being a really consistently I don't know if it's like one of their core range or if it's a, you know, an all year round sort of beer. But it's got that taste of like, we need something a little bit more safe that everyone can drink. And I can imagine this going down really well at one of their bars or on tapping uh, a local bottle shop or a bar, a, you know, pub or whatever. But yeah, it's not bad. It's just not really um, blowing me away. To be honest, but again, I'm not 
looking for that every time I have a beer. Sometimes I just want to drink a beer and enjoy it. It's got nice flavours. It's simple. It's a 7 out of 10. I would definitely drink it again. Um, yeah, not, not too bad at all. I think it's, uh, in terms of how I'm uh, recording these free beers, I think it's sensible that I drink this now before I go on to a mango pale ale because there's always a chance that the mango in that beer... Well, we won't talk about that beer because we've not drank it yet. Um, you will see that review, though. But, um, yeah, this, out of the three, out of the two that I've had so far, I'm not enjoying this as much as the lager um, that I had, that you saw on Monday. Because I don't know when I'm going to upload them, but definitely now I'm uploading these Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Yeah, it's not bad at all. 7 out of 10. So if you have tried Top Rope's Overkill in your pale ale, then let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. What's some of your favourite Top Rope beers? What's some of your favourite Welsh breweries? Um, did you like this one? Did you not like it? Uh, thoughts and opinions, always welcome. A massive, massive thank you once again to Adam Mersey Beers, whose links are going to be down below, so do check him out. And uh, yeah, also go check out Top Rope. And if you've not seen... Uh, my review of the DLA Lager, then it's that way. Two videos back. Watch it. I think you might enjoy it. Because I get interrupted halfway through. Anyway. Yeah. Nice, nice, simple beer. And, um, yeah, happy with that. Adam, thank you once again, my friend. And uh, thank you all for watching this. I hope you're all taking care. I hope you're all staying safe. And hope you and yours are doing well. See you guys later. And, uh, yeah. Join me on Friday or tomorrow because I'll upload something else. Cheeky. See you guys later. Yeah, not too bad. I've had better, I've had worse. It's just one of those middle of the road beers that's well brewed but doesn't really over ex yeah, it doesn't excite you too much, but at the same time, I'm gonna finish the rest of it. It's by far a drain pour. Yeah, two out of two. I'm doing good. Uh, Craig says overkill is Mark Askins the wrestler's nickname. Okay. Sorry, dudes, I knew it was something to do with that. <clears throat> I, I lie, I don't I don't really know. As you can clearly tell. So I just quickly need to get a thumbnail for this. And then we'll move on to our third and final beer from Top Rope for this evening. A little bit more in there, so it's a more aesthetically pleasing thumbnail. Even though I look like an absolute tit when I'm uh, shooting thumbnails now, because I have to use a selfie camera on my phone, which is very, very annoying. There we go. No, don't cancel. It's not really as good as the. See, I do sometimes put effort in the uh, channel. Don't know what you're talking about. Calling my channel low quality. It's very cheeky. I've never considered myself low quality. On a human level, I am, but not in terms of a beer reviewer. That's a lie. So, yeah, shall we move on to the third and final beer? I love this feature, and I love the fact that I've got the uh, little thank you message uh, scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Um, it's features like this that make me really quite like uh, Stream Yard. It's just a shame. About 10 minutes into joining someone else's stream, loads of delay occurs, which is uh, very annoying. Google helped me. I didn't have a clue. Google all the way. All the way to leaves. So, yeah. Um, mango pale ale coming next. I'm going to say this up front. Mango in beer. Sometimes it's a disaster. Sometimes it's really good. So uh, we shall see how this one goes. But I definitely think I've uh, made the right choice. Preemptively, um, of course. I made the right choice going into this last. Just because I don't want a really strong flavour. Corrupting uh, other flavours of other beers. What the hell did that even mean? So, 
let's get this started. Hi guys, welcome to uh, the third and final uh, beer um, from Top Rope this week. Um, obviously, this was as part of my, I can't speak properly, this was part of my um, brewery showcase, which was uh, all made possible by the wonderful Adam from Mersey Beers, who provided me with all three beers uh, that you're seeing this week. Um, I'll probably end up putting uh, other beers that he sent me in this week as well. Um, so Adam's going to get a whole lot of love <laughs> this week. Uh, rightfully deserved. And uh, tell you what, so far, rightfully deserved the brewery as well. Uh, first I did the DOA Lager, go watch the review. Then I followed that up with um, an IPA, Overkill, go watch that. Um, and I thought I'd save this beer for last, just in case it's got a stronger flavour. And uh, let's see, Papa Shango Wrestler, I'm just reading the live chat, because uh, we're looking at Papa Mango, which is uh, named after Papa Shango. Uh, yeah, top, top rope, as you probably have already guessed, um, is wrestling oriented. It's very nice looking artwork. I'm sure these patterns and colours um, can be found on the wrestler. Uh, Papa Shango. Is it Shango or Shago? Shango. So, uh, yeah, a mango pale ale clocking in at 5.1% and it's brewed with mango puree. So, let's see what we get with this one then. A little bit of uh, an eruption in the can as well. Come joke. Classy. So let's see what we get with this, and yeah, mango all the way, it's even pouring like mango juice. Look at that, look at the vibrancy on that. Mango puree in a glass, maybe watered down with some mango smoothie, and then watered down even more with mango juice. Can you even get mango juice? I don't know. But uh, yeah, look at that, it's like a block of colour, really nice and voluptuous looking beer, uh, with just a, a lining of white head. And it looks even nicer on camera because of the, the light coming through over there, bleeding through. Adds a nice luminance to it. That's my new favourite word, if you haven't noticed in a lot of my uh, IPA reviews and stuff and pale ales. But uh, yeah, looking from the top, you'd think someone's actually just poured you some juice in a glass. Looks fantastic. Head's dissipated really quickly. Let's see what we get on the nose. Mango, but it's not too in your face, and it doesn't smell synthetic. I'm even getting like a freshly squeezed orange, freshly squeezed orange juice coming through as well. It's got like slight citrusiness, which I'm, I'm attributing to uh, the hops that have been used in this. But yeah, mango is the uh, the star of the show on this one for sure, without it being too overpowering and too sickly. If that makes sense. <sighs> yeah, smells good. It smells just smells like freshly squeezed juice. It's breakfast. Mmm, smells damn good. I'm really excited for this now. Let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys, and cheers once again to Adam. Cheers. Oh yeah. Oh, thank God this tastes good. It's got that aftertaste that I don't like with mango in beers. But that can't be helped. The only way you'd cover that up is if you threw something else in there or made it way too sweet. Yeah, really quite savoury and bitter um, aftertaste coming from that mango puree. But it's not too distracting. It doesn't take doesn't take too much away from the beer itself. <coughs> Excuse me. It, it's got the consistency of freshly squeezed orange juice. That hasn't been like filtered. That's really good. It's got a lovely body to it. It's not really heavy. It's not really like creamy or anything like that. But it's got genuine fruit juice 
I like you've put a little bit of sparkling water in there as well, just to add a little bit of fizz, a little bit of zazz, a little bit of zinc, and other annoying words that would be used in that way. A little bit herbal as well, like freshly uh, picked mint. Mm. It's subtle, but still flavorful, if that makes sense. You can still taste the beer in this, which is always important. And for a pale ale of this ABV, obviously it's helped a little by that mango puree. The body's just fantastic. Lovely, lovely stuff. Again, the only thing that I'm not really too keen on this, and I get it a lot from a lot of mango beers, is the lingering aftertaste and sensation you get on the tongue from mango. That you wouldn't necessarily get if you like et, like a fresh mango. If that makes sense. But yeah, that's really nice. I like that a lot. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd happily, happily have that again. If they did a beer like this, but with either blood orange or grapefruit, then I would be shitting myself with excitement. And probably also jizzing everywhere as well. Bulgur for no reason. Anyway, yeah, lovely stuff. Um, I was a little bit apprehensive, I'm not going to lie, because I've had some really bad mango beers. What did I have recently? Uh, it was a Mango Vermont IPA from Tiny Rebel, and that was just awful. That was like, that beer, or the, at least the can I had, and not to shit on another brewery, because I'm a big fan of Tiny Rebel. I don't like doing that on reviews where you bitch about another brewery or compare to another brewery, but sometimes you've just got to because it's your own point of reference that you need to get out there. <coughs> Excuse me. They used Mango Puree in that IPA, and it just did not work at all. <coughs> the, the aftertaste that I get from this was like amplified, but throughout the whole beer. But then you can get exactly the same sort of... Um, character and you just get an absolutely wonderful beer like this it's really really nice hampered purely by um, a character that you really cannot avoid um, too easily and that's just the aftertaste body's perfect just the right amount of hoppiness to complement the mango um, just the right amount of sweetness right amount of bitterness for the most part yeah, so in terms of rating, I can give, awkwardly close, Papa Mango an 8 out of 10. I would happily have that again. And uh, yeah, that's three beers that I've had this evening from Top Rope. And it's safe to say that I would happily drink more beers from them. Um, and it's just got to give a massive, massive thank you once again to Adam for uh, sourcing not only these beers, but like pretty much like a week or so's beers, which, to be honest, most of them have gone now. I've only got the bottles left, Adam. Um, you saw me through three days of self-isolation. But it's better than only making me through one day. But I've, I've got more beers on the way because I've panic bought beers in there. Ooh. Lovely stuff. I really like this. 8 out of 10. Um, oh, it's a little bit of spiciness coming through now. Mm. I like that. Yeah, it's going to get half a point for that. 8.5 out of 10. Lovely stuff. Um, highly recommended if you come across cannabis. Don't do that literally or else you get kicked out of the bottle shop. But uh, funny joke. Another cum joke. Why the fuck am I going on about dicks and cum on a beer review? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's derailed this uh, video and live stream. But oh well. Lovely, lovely stuff indeed. 8.5 out of 10. Go check out Top Rope and go check out Adam from Noisy Beers, both here on YouTube and on Untapped. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you for joining me for um, this week of uh, Top Rope Beers and the other two beers in between.
Um, I like doing these sort of series, and I like, even if only one person was to go out to Top Rope, or even go to like their Instagram page, or something like that. In times like this, because this will be this will be recorded a couple of weeks after um, the, the the effects of the coronavirus have kicked into society. We're just you know schools are just about to close, people are self isolating like I am. There's travel bans. It's probably going to get a little bit worse from this point. It probably has been worse by the time you've uh, watched this. I'd like to think that we've slightly uh, eased off a little bit and. You know, starting to slowly get back into the swing of things, but you just can't say at this point. And hopefully, by the time you're watching this, um, breweries like Top Rope are still able to operate. Um, so yeah, go check them out down below. Share any sort of uh, brewery post about their company that you can. Any sort of like, because uh, I know a lot of breweries right now are doing um, free local delivery, uh, significant discounts on their beers. Uh, delivery outside of the sort of a uh, jurisdiction not the right word but you know what I mean and uh, a lot of breweries are now and bottle shops um, are starting to actually try and get some form of online presence so they can just make a little bit of money so they've at least got something to for the most part not really able to fall back on but yeah share any sort of um, crowdfunding campaign you can um, even if you can't get to a specific bottle shop or a brewery, whatever, just share them because someone you know might be able to and they'll be able to share it and then that's two people who'll be able to go pick up beers, support in the industry. Um, yeah, it's what it's all about really and that's one of the main reasons why I do um, these sorts of weeks when it comes to beer and that's why I've sometimes seen me upload two beers from the same brewery on the same day. Uh, I'm not purely doing that just to get rid of files on my computer, I assure you, but um, yeah, that's why I like doing this, that's why I like doing these live things, because um, it might not make the biggest difference. And uh, yeah, my camera just died because I've run out of memory. So uh, that's the end of that review then. Um, yeah, but that's, that's my closing statement um, with that. But yeah, this is really good. Hopefully I've got enough memory to take a photo for the thumbnail. But yeah. A little bit apprehensive before going into this. But um, no need, because that was a lovely, lovely beer. So let's see if I can get a thumbnail. And then I'll read the last comment or so, or comment or two. And then... The awkward way I have to fucking do this. It's so fucking annoying. All because I was pissed. Like three weeks after buying this phone. And I dropped it right on the main camera. So. As it was so graciously pointed out to me. In uh, the Facebook chat that I'm part of. Looks like I'm taking photos from a sauna. When I'm using the proper camera. Uh, but you can actually take some really good photos. With some slight tinkering. Uh, with the front facing camera on this phone. I'm sure I've got enough photos to work with there. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Excuse the fuck out of me. Anyway. Oh. New patron society box. Um, coming from Northern Monk. interesting i'll have to look into that but anyway so yeah i'm going to call it there folks and hope you've enjoyed this um and i hope it's at least got you uh looking at a brewery like top rope if, if you've not done so already um let's see so ben golding says discovered your channel today top stuff i appreciate that appreciate that very much Ben. thank you um and nice to meet you my friend hope you're enjoying the content so far and uh, then Craig says, the Godfather, he performed under many names. Okay, is that in relation to uh, Papa uh, Shango? Sort of like a Sergeant Slaughter, Commissioner Slaughter. Well, did he have another persona? I don't think he did. 
then you have the ninety rev. We're not going to go into wrestlers um, with my vague knowledge of wrestling. Um, but yeah, happy with these beers um, that I tried from Top Rope. Good stuff indeed. Highly recommend if you can uh, source some cans, or if not, as I said, you know, just share their posts, share the brewery as much as possible because they might be doing their own little bit of a you know last ditch effort to claw back a little bit of money before we all potentially you know get shut in permanently for like months um so yeah just just share even if you, you can't buy the beer even if you're not really wanting to buy the beer just share it because you never know someone else might be able to get a few beers put a few bob into the pockets of the employees of uh, top rope um i'm not sure how i mean for the most part every brewery uh, seems to be affected in the same way. Of course, uh, there's the likes of Brewdog and stuff who, you know, to be fair, they are doing some really good things, but it won't affect them nowhere near as bad um, as someone like Top Rope. Do you know what I mean? Uh, let's see. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed that. A little bit... Um, weird at the start when I got interrupted by work phoning me um, but I'll tell you what guys that's a big weight off my mind uh, find, finding out stuff I found out and uh, yeah I enjoy doing these brewery showcases um, if I get more than three beers from another brewery over the next couple of weeks you can expect to see um, another one and I want to try to do these a little bit more regularly um, especially with this current situation that we're in anyway that's it for now, guys. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your patience. And, um, yeah, hope everyone's doing okay, by the way. Um, hope none of uh, your family or friends are affected directly by the virus. Um, and I hope it's mainly just slight inconvenience, um, at the very least, for you all. Because uh, I can't even begin to imagine how it must be uh, having someone who's... Um, basically clinging on to life because of this stuff. Um, the reason why I self-isolated is because, you know, I'm living with someone who's um, in a very vulnerable position whilst living with someone who uh, had potential symptoms of the coronavirus. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm not one of those people who judge someone who decides to go to work because at the end of the day, you've got to make, you've got to make money um, to survive. Um, but I'd like to think that we are going to get a bit more help from the, uh, the government. I'd like them to really prove um, <clears throat> people wrong and get rid of the reputation that they rightfully have, uh, the Tory government. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed there's, there's things in place that will not only help the, the hospitality uh, industry, but also you and me. Um, luckily, I'm not affected too badly. The worst thing that can happen to me is I lose, I lose my job and then I have to find another job at some point. Um, you know, I've got really no responsibilities or anything like that. No one's depending on me. Um, you know, I, I'm lucky I'm not in a position where I'm, I'm caring after someone or I've got children. So I'm, I'm really quite lucky um, in that regard. So uh, I just hope that everyone's doing OK. And uh, it's, a, it's a mental strain as well. Um, <clears throat> one thing that people aren't really discussing is the, the effect of people's mental health. Um, it's affected me uh, a little bit this week. Um, I'm not going to lie, uh, getting really serious now, aren't we? Uh, public service um, announcement, statement, Jerry's final thoughts. Um, but yeah, essentially, I just hope everyone's doing as well as they possibly can be. And uh, just keep your chin up. We can beat this, we can overcome this. And hopefully we just get a little bit of help uh, from the powers that be. And just maybe cut a little bit of slack. And then hopefully, after it's all blown over, the powers that we can see that, do you know what, we can keep going with this sort of stuff, like a universal income, which I'm all in favour of. Um, but we, we're not going to get bogged down in politics, uh, because it's depressing enough as it is right now. Anyway, you all take care, you all stay safe, thank you so much for watching, thank you to everyone who's commented, thank you to everyone who watched this after it's gone um, up uh, on YouTube, and also thank you to everyone who will watch the reviews afterwards. Uh, it really means a hell of a lot, and uh, yeah, I just hope you all take care. Anyway, I'm waffling now. See you all later. And this is the awkward part where I think the broadcast is ending, uh, but it isn't because there's like.